So then back to the quickest road to financial freedom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it, I think, I mean, the first answer that can't like the bullet, like the quick answer was knowing thyself, right? Which is a lot of people, because right now entrepreneurship's cool. It won't be cool in a few years when everyone loses everything. Um, and so that'll probably, it'll probably calibrate a little bit. Yeah. Um, and so I think it's just, it's just the one thing that you can always protect yourself with that and this is something that I have learned from my, you know, Iranian family is, you know, when, when the revolution happened in Iran, we talk about legacy, lands, buildings, houses, bank accounts, government just says, those are ours now. Mm -hmm. That's it. There's your legacy. Gone. So that's why I'm like, and people are like, I want to build a legacy. I'm like, the U.S. might not even be the superpower in 500 years. Your kids, your kids might be in, in, in Bangladesh. Who knows? India might yeah. be the, the hot spot in 500. No one knows, right? And so that was a touch on legacy. But skills are the only thing that we'll always appreciate in time and work in compound, compound in concert. So when they work together, if you know how to do math, then you can learn how to do accounting. If you learn how to do accounting, you can learn how to do tax work. If you learn how to do tax work, you can figure out how to insurance works. If you figure out how insurance works, then you all of a sudden you're a CFO and you can prepare companies for sale. Like the skills stack on top of each other. And, Specialized skills are valuable independent of the currency or the economic climate. And so if you are good, you will always have a place to provide value because people want good stuff. Prices may vary, currencies may vary, but people will want the things you have if you are good. And the only way to get good is to work. And so I think that a lot of people spend a lot of their time in paralysis trying to figure out what the quote ideal opportunity would be when you won't know what the ideal opportunity is because you don't have a baseline. And I believe that research is done through doing. And you learn a lot more by doing stuff in action and then you will gain the insights of where the opportunities lie. Which is why why Combinator comes up again. What they look for in past founders, one of their criteria for a successful business is past experience in the industry. So, and that can be, I just wrote a tiny blurb about this in the book that I'm writing, that can be tangential. Like if your dad owned a mechanic shop or was a mechanic, you probably know a lot more about cars than you, than like you, to you, it seems obvious, but like, I don't know anything about cars, nothing, nor do I really have the interest. But like, if you wanted to get in the space, you probably have some level of knowledge. Some people look at just the whole world and they're like, I don't know anything, but this is maybe a good, like, but I think it's better to have some level. Cause usually we have learned stuff in our lives, whether we like it or not. Yeah. And starting in the, in, in, in every industry, that your parents, your cousins, you worked in, there was massive opportunity. It just depends on how you structure it, right? So like, let's say my first job was, I was a blender tender at Smoothie King. It's the first job I got. Blender tending, not a very good opportunity, right? I'm probably not gonna scale that, right? Managing there, probably not either. Owning the, owning the, the location, a little bit more leverage because now I have leverage on labor, right? Owning the franchise, much more. Right. And so like all industries, if you go high enough up and this is the rule of thumb for anyone, if you want to see where, where opportunity exists, look at the businesses that have been here the longest mm -hmm. because they make tons of money. The only reason they would exist is because they can, they can exist during downturns. The only way you can exist during downturn is you make tons of profits all the time so that you can weather it. Like JP Morgan's been here for longer than anybody's been alive. Right. Some of the big insurance companies. Why is insurance so profitable? Because you pay them for nothing. Like pay hundreds of, I mean, it depends on what it, like you pay thousands and thousands and thousands a year for something that may never happen. And they just know how to appropriately value risk, mm -hmm. assess risk, excuse me. And so wonderful business, right? Insurance. Um, and so the, the, the point is, is like, I've now learned to see this as like, when I see big businesses, the bigger the business, the more I realize that there's probably a very high gross margin opportunity. So you look at the biggest companies on the stock market, look at what they're doing. The base unit that they're selling typically has tremendous, like the biggest company in the world right now in terms of profit is like Exxon. That's the number one in terms of net free cash flow that's created. Isn't that crazy? Like people are like Facebook, no, it's, it's Exxon. Why? Because they drill water out of the ground and they sell it for however many hundred dollars per, yeah. right? It's not water, it's oil, but it works the same way, right? right? And so, and that's a, a massive overgeneralization, but like you get the idea. Yeah. And so Facebook sells eyeballs, which cost them basically nothing. Google sells eyeballs, which cost them basically nothing. And so all of these types of businesses, and this is where people get into the ethics around capitalism and whatnot, but like you sell for what the market values it at, period. And your goal as a business is to drive your cost down as much as you can, 
right? As long as you're still long-term greedy, which is if you drive them too low or you don't pay people well enough, you introduce new levels of risk, which then long-term you actually lose money. So that's when you get into the long-term, short-term, like CEO ship of uh, publicly traded companies and stuff, which we don't need to get into. But like, if you if you were to only own the company and you could not ever exit, and you made your decisions with long-term greed in mind, um, then you usually make the right calls. And I'll say one last thing about the how to how to get freedom. Biggest mistake that I see young people or people who are young in the game making is that they want to become millionaires in 90 days. And when most times you could guarantee that you could become a millionaire in a decade, but you have to be willing to not be a millionaire for nine of those 10 years. And if I had everyone sign a contract that said that when they were 20, they could all be millionaires when they're 30. But no one's willing to do that. And so what happens is for the rest of their lives, they keep chasing the shiny object over and over again and keep battling the same boss and losing. I mean, we were just sitting back, you know, <laughs> chopping it up, reminiscing about the good old days and all that. <laughs> you know, tracking my roots, where I came from and where I'm going.